Photon Scanner is an OSINT tool that's useful for all kinds of scraping operations. If you have a target website and you want to mine for anything from a graphical representation of the subdomains all the way to hidden API keys, Photon Scanner is an incredibly useful tool. We'll show you how it works on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. When you're pursuing a hacking strategy, it's often a great idea to begin by scanning the target's website. There are a lot of crawlers out there, but Photon is one of my favorite because in general, it's Python, so it's cross-platform, and also it's incredibly fast. Now, Photon has a focus on a number of different sets of data that would be useful to a hacker or an OSINT investigator, including password hashes, uh, the ability to find API keys that developers might have left in, and even the ability to do all this querying from a third-party ninja mode, which means your source will never find out you are the one that's actually doing the asking. Now, in order to use this, you'll need to install some libraries, and you can check out the article on Nullbyte in order to get a better understanding of what you need to install. But in general, this is cross-platform, so Linux, Windows, it doesn't really matter, you should be able to run it. Once you have Python installed on your computer, then we can begin. Photon Scanner is designed for OSINT, and if you go to the GitHub repository here, you can see more information about the project and learn a little bit more about what it's for. Now here you can see that it does data extraction, which means URL both in scope and out of scope, URLs with parameters, intelligence like emails, social media accounts, Amazon buckets, etc. Files, which means a whole bunch of different media that you might find interesting clues in. Secret keys, and what this means is it looks for strings that have a lot of randomness in them, which usually are either API keys that developers accidentally leave in their code, which can be a major problem, and I've seen this exploited in various ways. Uh, or API endpoints, which also are, are a problem because it can allow somebody to log into a system or get responses that they're not supposed to get. This will also look for hashes, which means that if somebody has stored anything, maybe um, test credentials or production credentials accidentally and left it in the code, it'll extract that and allow you to go through and see if you can find some information that they uh, maybe left in by accident. Now, it'll also show a complete list of all the JavaScript files that are included. So if we want to audit those files in order to see whether or not we're maybe dealing with one that's insecure that we can inject something into, we can do that as well. Now we can make this specific by doing a regex pattern match, and we can also do a subdomain um, and DNS related data dump that actually visualizes it in a way that's really easy to understand for even a beginner when you're dealing with the target website. Now, of course, you can see some uh, uh, plugins that you can use, which are the Wayback Machine, DNS Dumpter, and Exporter. Um, and these are all extra useful if you want to extend your, uh, your version of Photon a little bit further so that you can use the Wayback Machine, for example, as a seed uh, for kind of being able to use maybe websites that haven't existed or a previous state that have URLs or links that uh, don't exist anymore. So maybe they, uh, a, a business used to be working with another business and they had a bunch of links to internal resources uh, and now they don't. Well, you can use a seed here uh, using the Wayback option in order to go back and actually scan a previous version of a website to find uh, leads, uh, maybe uh, URLs or something else that don't exist there anymore. Now, um, you can do this via Docker, but I hate that because I've never successfully learned to, to run Docker and have it work well. Um, but instead, I recommend just doing it via Python because everybody has Python. It's installed by default on a lot of stuff. Um, if you have Python, then you can go ahead and copy the Git repository here. And then after typing CD to go to your root directory, type in Git clone and then oops, the address there. Now, this won't work because I already have it. But when you type ls uh, and then CD photon, then you can type ls again and you can see, hey, we have all this great stuff that we've scraped. Now, my original idea was to try to use a, uh, basically do uh, an example of how you could use this for fake news. So I was going to use the um, media part or where you scrape Intel, try to get a whole bunch of email addresses from a popular uh, form here where people like buy and sell guns in America. 
called Guns America, uh, and see if I could generate a list of firearms owners that I could be like, oh no, like somebody's compiling a list and basically like put together some fake news. Unfortunately, it didn't work so well. So we're gonna run it against some other various targets and see what we can do, even though the email extraction module is not as good as some of the other crawlers that I have worked with. So in spite of that, I'm sure that there's some way you can customize it to be able to crawl a little bit deeper, but I found this to take much too long in order to actually be able to do that properly. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and go through some of the commands you can do with Photon to show you exactly kind of like what it takes to do a successful crawl. So uh, let's take a look at one of the ones I did previously, which is to uh, go sudo python photon.py and then tack u for the URL we're looking for, and then example.com. Now, I can also specify verbose, and this is gonna do a very basic scrape. And when it does, uh, it'll come back with the information that's on this example domain. And of course, this doesn't really go much of anywhere. You can see example.com uh, just goes to this little thing. But even though this doesn't have much there, it can return a pretty good amount of information about links that links in, links that link out, so while this is going to be not that interesting, there's other things we can do with Photon that are a lot more exciting. So instead, we can go ahead and get the help file by running sudo python photonbot.py slash tag h. And here we can see all the interesting parameters we can run in order to make the search more specific. Now here you can see some of the more useful ones are output. So if you wanna save this to a directory, um, which of course it'll just save it by default um, to one with the same name that you run the URL against, or you can also do something like set a delay if you're getting a CAPTCHA um, on a particular website that you're trying to scrape. You can do uh, basically a DNS search, which will output a graphical map of all the domains, the subdomains that have been discovered by DNS data. You can indicate ninja mode, which will allow you to uh, basically query this website from a third party. And then you can do keys in order to specify you want to look for secret keys. Now, while we have our first scan running, let's go ahead and start constructing a second one and see if we can make it a little bit more specific. So we'll, we'll first say we want to do, let's go with um, priceline.com. And then we can also say we want to look for keys. We want to uh, maybe include DNS information as well. So we'll get a graphic, kind of just an image of all their subdomains. Uh, and then I think that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and search for keys, DNS. And actually, if we go to the, um, the GitHub repository, you can see that it mentions uh, files and all that stuff as well. So let's go down and see if we can get some examples of running it to uh, search for this sort of stuff. So you can see on the Fo uh, Photon Wiki, there's a how to use. And on this section, you can get a little bit deeper into some of the examples that it provides and maybe learn a little bit more about what each of these does. So for example, I'm not touching the depth of crawling, but if you wanna go deeper, you can basically set a recursion limit for going and not only scraping the top layer of URLs, but then finding every uh, domain or every link that's on those URLs too, and then searching all of them too. So you can go down even further and really make the scan take quite a lot of time. But if you want to customize it, you should always look on the wiki for and the GitHub page if there's one available, because here we can see we can extract secret keys, we can do an update, um, ninja mode, DNS dumping mode with the sample output, and this is all really useful. So I'm actually, I think I'm gonna keep it at that because I don't want this scan to go on for too much longer and I don't have any cookies uh, to include. So let's go ahead and run the scan while the other one is completing. And oops, and we want DN, DNS, not DSN. There we go. So while this runs, let's check back on our other scan and see if it is complete. Oops. Now you might've noticed that the first scan, the second scan we were doing actually failed because of the first scan. So you might notice that if you're running these scans concurrently, they can possibly interfere with each other. 
Now here, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the example.com directory. And I can go into a file map in order to see other sorts of stuff that we found. So if I go to Photon, I can see example.com. And here I can see a list of external and internal uh, domains that are either linking to this or linking out of it. Now, again, this isn't too much information about this one. Uh, I made this domain up, but it turns out something was there. But you can see that the scan takes roughly four minutes, depending on uh, how much information you're requesting. And let's go ahead and load our second one, see if we can pull a little bit more information from a live website rather than just a example one that doesn't really have much on it. So one thing that's important to note is I sometimes get this error. You have to type HTTP, I'm gonna do S, Priceline.com. If you don't do the HTTP or HTTPS, uh, HTTP, then um, it won't be able to find it. So let me actually get it directly from the browser. And there we go. Now, as you can see, by properly formatting this, we were able to cut down the amount of time it took. And this is important because if you just throw a random URL in there, sometimes Photon Scanner will actually need to kind of parse it and figure out what to search and what's actually right and what's not. So by taking it directly from the browser, you can see that the scan took only 26 seconds as compared to the four minutes while it was kind of fumbling around trying to find all the information. So this is one thing to note that it does uh, definitely help to get an exact URL to work with because just providing Priceline.com isn't the same as HTTPS colon to slashes and then you know, you know the uh, slash at the end. So keep that in mind when you're using this tool because it can really cut down the amount of time it takes in order to navigate uh, through a bunch of different URLs you might want to scan. So now this only went through the default amount of uh, numeration, so it didn't go incredibly deep, but it was able to find a number of interesting files and potential things like scripts. So let's take a look at what we found by going into Photon and then Priceline.com. Now here, the most interesting thing is going to be right off the bat, the DNS representation. So when we open this, we'll be able to see a map of all the subdomains that we discovered and where they exist within all that is Priceline.com's online space. So here, when we zoom in further, you can see this is pretty impressive and gives us a really good indication of where everything links back to, maybe what the most valuable thing to attack would be, and even some indication of what's running on all of these different services. So starting from Priceline.com, this branches off to, uh, let's see, a Microsoft server, a big IP server, an Apache server, another Microsoft server. Uh, we really learned a lot of information about the infrastructure running behind um, what Priceline is providing. And here you can see that their infrastructure seems to be a lot of Microsoft servers and some other stuff that we can start to use to either feed this into uh, another stage of our pen testing or maybe start to look for the version that is running on these individual servers and see, hmm, maybe this one hasn't been updated in a while. And if we gain access to this, then we gain access to their DigitalOcean account and then we can move up from there. So even another thing is we can see that, you know, they're using third parties like DigitalOcean in order to do some of their like hosting and stuff like that. So this is a really bountiful kind of uh, association of them with all these third party services that they link to via DNS. Now reading through this just te um, via text is a nightmare. So this is a really nice way of discovering and kind of planning um, based on this information because you can see that the nodes are all connected to each other. Um, this is SendGrid Inc. So they have a third party administering all these services uh, and then, you know, Steadfast, uh, California Education and Research Federation Network. These are all really interesting uh, endpoints that could be used to maybe attack a subservice and then go up the chain. So aside from the DNS information, let's see what we were able to extract in terms of keys. Now keys are special because if we've managed to find an internal service that is maybe sharing something that they shouldn't be, 
Uh, it looks like we weren't able to find too much, but this is where we would be able to start identifying uh, API keys that could lead us deeper into a service or finding endpoints that let us maybe input something that would let us, uh, I don't know, fuzz a service or discover how it works. So here we also have a list of all the JavaScript that is running on the subdomains that we found. So we can identify, it looks like they're mostly CAPTCHAs. And then a list of subdomains uh, in just a text format. If let's say we want to feed these into something, maybe a vulnerability scanner, rather than just representing them in a graph. Now we also have a list of internal uh, IP addresses, which we can, or not IP addresses, uh, internal subdomains here, which we can translate into IP addresses and all sorts of other things used for targeting it later. And then we have finally a list of the robots.txt, which can provide, uh, supplement the list of uh, domains that we already know about with new ones that might have not been discovered in the original scan. Now, this is a really useful way of being able to break down everything a website has. And I can even use a couple other examples and see, for example, pbs.com um, just has this very simple domain structure. And uh, there's some other websites that I ran scans against in order to just kind of see what they look like. And a local shipping company, um, for example, also has a list of files that I was able to extract. So here you can see they not only have a PDF, so registered shippers and some other stuff that you can use in order to maybe understand how this business you know, really works or does business, um, but also a list of external versus internal domains for determining how they're linking to other sites and what other services might be linking to them. Photon Scanner is an amazing tool for learning OSINT because you can run it on virtually any website to learn more about it. If you're going to be doing a lot of requests, however, you might not want to use the Ninja mode because it can be quite slow and it does tax the service to do a whole bunch of requests. Instead, you can use a VPN or Tor to obfuscate your IP address. So I would recommend doing that if you're going to be automating this by maybe passing everything onto a vulnerability scanner and making your, making your own automated attack flow. That's all we have with this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you need to do any troubleshooting, you can always check out the article for more details over on Nullbyte. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.